Welcome to Business 214 Fun with Advanced Excel. Hey, this is Vblog8. Hey, we're in Workbook Chapter 2. We just got done looking at averages and standard deviation, max, min, count, and counter. Now, we want to do a sales total for the sales representatives and then rank them and then figure out if they get their bonus or not. All right. How are we going to do this? We have our the names of the sales reps here and all of our data down here. We need to somehow summarize so that up here we can add all the sales for Al, add all the sales for Gwen, etc. And we're going to use the sum if. The sum if will say, hey, add up everything in this column only if it's for Al. All right, uh, we're going to type equals S-U-M-I-F open parentheses. Now, the screen tip is always very polite. It has um, in bold the argument that you need. Then you have a comma, and then you build your function like that. However, sometimes it's hard to figure out what that range means and what that ra sum range means, what the arguments really require. So then in that case, we can always click the insert function button. Boop. And then, whoa, look at that range, and there's a description. If I tab, this is criteria. Oh, and there's a description of what I need for this argument. All right, let's uh, click in range. Is the range of cells you want evaluated? Oh, so we need to look through the actual names, the sales representative names, because the criteria is Al. So here we're going to type SD, square bracket, sales rep I think I got that right and then square bracket it doesn't nothing shows up over here so I actually um, that is not a legitimate name I'm actually gonna click cancel I'm gonna type equals sum if open parentheses SD close bracket and then double click. Notice before we could we we used the down arrow and then tab. You can also just come here on this list and double click if you're a mouse person. And then close square bracket. It looks like there was a little space that I left out. Now I'm gonna click back here now that I have that first argument. So you can kind of go back and forth if you need to. There it is. And you can see the preview here. Isn't that cool? That's a good use for that preview. All right, the criteria is going to be one cell to my left. I'm going to see if the left arrow key would work. Nope, it won't. So I'm going to click the Collapse dialog button and scroll up. And then I'm going to click on Al. Or actually, no, I'm going to click one cell to my left. And then I'm going to click the Uncollapse. Criteria is the condition or criteria in the form of number expression or text that defines which cells to be added. Oh, yeah, there's Al. It gives us a preview there. That's our criteria. So it looks through here and finds all the Al's. Now, the sum range, we're not going to add up names. Oh, no, we're going to add up that uh, the actual sales numbers. So we need to see if we can do this right. SD, square bracket, sales, square bracket. Oh, there it is. So we typed it in right here, and you can see that preview. Now here's the deal. Here's how sum if works. This range and this criteria work together to figure out all the al cells. Then it goes over to this range right here, which has to be the exact same size as this range. And then it pulls all of the sales numbers from this range. All right, let's click OK. You can see a preview there and a preview there. Click OK. Now, I'm going to point to the fill handle. And when I see my angry rabbit, I'm going to click and drag. Boop. And then I'm going to click in the last cell here and hit F2 to verify. No way. Look at that. It still has got the SD sales, SD sales wrap. Remember, this is table nomenclature. So if we add new records at the bottom, this will update. Just, just for kicks, let's try it. Let's scroll down a little bit. I'm going to click at the top here, and I'm going to control down arrow. Then I'm going to hit tab at the bottom of a table. If you're in the very last cell, last little corner cell here, and hit tab, what does it do? Adds a new record. 5,000. Tab. Al. I'm going to control home to jump back up here real quick. 
quickly. Control Home. Now I didn't. There's 90k for 695 for Al. Uh, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. When I get to this list, I'm going to click and Control Down Arrow. I'm going to tab and add a new record for Al. I'm going to say this rec This is 10,000. 10, and then Al. Control Home to jump back up just near the top. There it is. So that is beautiful. It is updating. Oh, hey, wait a second. We did this in the wrong column. Hey, we did that form in the wrong column. Hey, let's look at a cool trick. Click right here. <coughs> hit F2. And then I want, ooh, I hit F1. I'm going to close that. Click Escape. I'm actually just going to, in this cell, notice if I hit F2, these are locked in essence. It's always going to look at um, those columns. But that one right there is a relative cell reference. Bzz, one to my left. I'm going to click Escape. I'm going to Control C. The dancing ants are marching around. Then I'm going to click in cell. Um, oh, how about all these cells? Just highlight all of them. And then the top one here, uh, Control V. No way, it pasted the formula into all cells. If you don't believe it, let's click in the bottom one here and hit F2. Sure enough, it worked. Now I'm going to come down here because I put those numbers in the wrong table. That's not uh, adding all the sales. Here we're going to count the number of sales, but we're not there yet. All right, let's see how rank works. Rank. I'm going to highlight the whole range here. Equals rank. What do you think this function does? Yeah, it ranks 1, 2, 3, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, uh, et cetera. So the number we want to rank, and then the reference, which is all of them, and then the order. You can either go uh, biggest to smallest or smallest to biggest. I'm going to click right here, boop, comma, and then the reference is all of these. Now, this formula is going to be copied down. We're actually going to control enter and enter it. This needs to be locked because this is not relative. I'm going to hit F4, F4 dollar signs because we're copying it down and we want it locked. And then comma, and isn't this cool? In 2007, it gives you very polite little drop down to remind you, oh, descending is 0 and ascending is 1. Ascending is going up the hill from smallest to biggest. Descending is um, one would go to the biggest. So let's put a zero. Close parentheses. Control Enter. And there it is. Al uh, got rank one. Megan got rank two, etc. Now I want to scroll way over here uh, because. If for some reason there's a tie here, watch what happens. I'm going to click in this cell just to do an experiment. Equals uh, that one right there, and then enter. Notice it gives them both four. Now there's lots of different types of ranking. Uh, this is fine here. What it does is here there's first, there's second, there's third. They're tied for fourth, which is fair because they are tied. And then it jumps, it skips five, and goes to six. I'm going to click Control Z. To get that back here. But there are many different situations. I'm going to scroll over here. We're not going to do this, but what I did is I put a little um, setup here. This one shows you the regular rank. So when it bumps into a tie, it's 2, 2, 2, 2, and then it jumps to the next one. However, you don't always want that. Sometimes you actually want a number, 1, 2, 3. So here's a formula right here, and I'm not going to talk about it, but it add, does a, adds a count if. This will rank them first, second, third, fourth, fifth. But notice that just the first one it bumps into is second, this one's third, this one's fourth. Sometimes you need that. But sometimes, especially in uh, scoring for sporting events, you need, though, to have uh, second, third, and fourth. Notice there's uh, three, five thousand. Second, third, and fourth, you need to add them and divide by the count. So two plus three plus four is nine. Divided by three is three, so they each get three. Uh, and you can click in that formula. That's a pretty complicated formula. Um, but there it is. You have this as a reference if you ever run into any ranking situations where you need to rank in a, a different way than the function does by default. All right, now um, we want to calculate a bonus here. And i got to show you something super cool. In uh, Excel, of course, we know about format. And we know that this format cells dialog box. Let's do that. Let's uh, click in this cell 5,000. Notice up in the formula bar looks like a 5,000 there. And it is. We put that number in there. And that's going to be our 
hurdle for whether you get a bonus or not. Okay, but I want to do something fancy. I want to add a format to this. Control 1. Control 1 is the keyboard shortcut for format cells. Under number, we've looked at uh, number. You can you see a sample there. Add a comma, currency, accounting, date, no way. Two th oh, yeah, right. Time, oh, 12 AM. We, we want to skip all over this and go down to custom. Actually, I'm going to click back on general. Uh, one cool aspect is if you have just prior clicked on a number format like number and then click on custom, it'll show you the custom number fat uh, format. For instance, uh, accounting has the most kind of complicated one here. But I'm going to click on number and click down here. It actually doesn't matter because I what I want to do is um, show you a, a trick. And it's a way to add a word because what we really want, I don't have an assumption table here where it, where it labels what this input is. This is the hurdle for whether you get a bonus or not. So usually you have the label above and then the number there or something like that. But here's a cool trick to avoid that. If you just have one cell and you want to have it labeled, you come down here to custom format right here. In fact, let's click right in this type. And I'm going to click backspace. Notice what's happening to our sample up here. Backspace. Backspace because we have no, uh, it, it doesn't need that. And then in quotes, quote, space, bonus, hurdle, end quote. No way, look at that. That's just the format. This text is not going to be in the cell. It's just a format. Remember, format is just a facade. It's what sits on top. Let's click OK. Now, look up here. You can see what's in the cell. So from now on, we can actually use this. It looks like it's numbers and words, but we can click on the cell and use it in a formula. All right, let's highlight this whole range here. And if we talked about if in business 216, here it is, equals if open parentheses. Now, what is the logical test? For each one of these sales reps, we need to say, are the total, the total sales, I got a spell check there again, uh, is that greater than this? So I'm going to click one cell to my left, greater than or equal to, and click on this bonus. Ooh, look, it looks like words. If this was actually um, typed in numbers and words, this formula wouldn't, wouldn't work. So there it is. And this D18 really needs to be D18, so we need to hit the F4 key and lock it once, twice, because we're going down across the rows. Comma, there's our logical test. Hey, what do you what do you want? Hey, we don't have a value if true. We don't have a value if true. Oh, there it is right there. So there it is locked going down. So the value of true, they get two thousand dollar bonus. And I'm gonna hit the F4 key. Boop, boop, twice. Dollar sign in front of the number, because when we're copying this formula down across the number, it needs to be locked. Comma, otherwise zero. Close parentheses, and then Control Enter. Ding 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 ding. Is that not cool? We know, we see how to use the if, which we already knew how to do a little bit. But that's the cool uh, new part to this. Five thousand. It's a number in the cell. So since formulas don't look at format, they only look at the underlying number. We can use that to our advantage here and have some format that says bonus hurdle. Hey, uh, just uh, to show you another weird way to do this. Highlight the whole range. Um, equals uh, open parentheses, click here, one, that's one, two, three cells to my left, greater than or equal to this uh, bonus hurdle, lock it, close parentheses, times this right here, F4, F4. This is a Boolean. Uh, logic formula, um, and then Control Enter. No way! Wait, what are you talking about? That's not a real formula. What? That doesn't make any sense at all. Let's click right here and hit F2. You know what this does? This comes out to be true or false. This is the first part of um, the if function, but it's a logical formula. It comes out to be true or false. But true in Excel and computer, most computer, all computer life, true is one. And false is 0. So really, this comes out to be tr either 1, true, which is 1, or false, which is 0. Hey, 1 times that is 2,000. 0 times that is 0. 
Let's see how this works. Control Enter and go to Formula Auditor, Formulas, Formula Auditing, or eva and then Evaluate Formula. The keyboard shortcut that works in earlier versions and this version version is Alt T U F, Tough Alt T U F, and Formula Evaluator will show us exactly what's happening here. It looks there. The underlying thing is what it looks at. Boop, and then. Oh, by the way, I'm going to click Close and do this again, Alt-T-U-F. The order of operations, of course, are do everything inside the parentheses first, right? So it's going to look at that, and then it's going to look at that. And uh, one of the last things um, formulas do is they look at operators, uh, comparative operators like this. So it's going to say, oh, true. So true is 1, so 1 times whatever is in uh, E18, which is 2,000, turns out to be true times 2,000. Boom. Click Escape. I'm going to click in a zero cell, Alt-T-U-F. I'm going to click Evaluate, 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 False. So false times 2,000 is zero. Is that not cool? That's called a Boolean logic formula. All right, when we come back on our next V-blog, we'll see how to uh, use COUNTIF and count the number of sales. All right, see you next V-blog.